His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa has arrived in Riyadh, the capital of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, heading the Kingdom of Bahrain's delegation to the 36th session of the Supreme Council of Arab Gulf States Summit, which begins later today. His Majesty was received on arrival by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdelaziz Al Saud, the Governor of Riyadh region, His Royal Highness Prince Faisal bin Bandar Al Abdelaziz Al Saud, the Crown Prince, Deputy Premier and Interior Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Nayef bin Abdelaziz Al Saud, Deputy Crown Prince, Second Deputy Premier and Defence Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdelaziz Al Saud, the GCC Secretary General Dr. Abdelatif bin Rashid Al Zayani, Minister of State and Cabinet Member Dr. Issam bin Saad bin Said, the accompanying minister, the head of royal protocols, Khalid bin Saleh al Abad, Riyadh's region secretary, Ibrahim bin Mohammed al Sultan, the ambassador of the custodian of the two holy mosques to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Dr. Abdullah bin Abdullah Malik al Sheikh, and the ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Hamoud bin Abdullah al Khalifa. His Majesty the King greeted senior recipients, including their Royal Highnesses, Princes, Ministers, Seniors, Civilians and Military Officials. The custodian of the two holy mosques also shook hands with members of the official delegation accompanying His Majesty the King. On the occasion, His Majesty the King expressed his pleasure at being in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and his utmost delight to meet again with the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdelaziz Al Saud, and participate in the 36th GCC Summit. He also confirmed a keenness to work with their majesties and highnesses, the leaders of the GCC countries, to accomplish more steps to bolster the blessed drive adopted towards Gulf integration in all fields, to achieve the people's aspirations and to keep up with the current developments and respond to future aspirations. He affirmed such brotherly meetings between the leaders of GCC countries are considered an opportunity to exchange views and consult on all issues and matters of concern to GCC states, to achieve everything in the welfare of the people, constructively seek to consolidate the security and stability of the region under fast transformation in the regional and international arenas. He said these challenges require top harmonization and coordination in the Gulf movement to boost collective cooperation, work persistently to activate and develop the role of the Gulf Cooperation Council in a manner to be felt by Gulf citizens in achieving their hopes and aspirations and upgrade to integration and union. He said the works of this session, hosted by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, will achieve the desired targets and attain the aspired goals in deepening the relations between GCC member countries at all levels to boost shared interest thanks to the insightful wisdom of their majesties and highnesses, the leaders of the GCC countries, who have ensured and maintained GCC countries' stability and security and thwarted many dangers. Finally, he wished the summit success to achieve the aspirations of prosperity and participating of participating countries and people. The mission of honour was formed under the chairmanship of Social Affairs Minister Dr. Majid bin Abdullah al Kasabi. Earlier today, His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa headed to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, leading the Kingdom's delegation to participate in the 36th Supreme Council of Gulf Arab States Summit in the Saudi capital, Riyadh. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa was at the forefront of the Kingdom's senior officials who saw him off, off His Majesty at the airport. His Majesty had been accompanied with an official delegation comprising His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamid Al Khalifa, the personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, the representative of His Majesty the King for charity work and youth affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Royal Court Minister, Sheikh Salman bin Abdullah bin Hamid Al Khalifa, the Chairman of the Survey and Land Registration Bureau, Sheikh Hamid bin Ibrahim bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, Dr. Hassan bin Abdullah Fakhra, the advisor of His Majesty the King for Economic Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Nabil bin Yaqub Al Hamar, advisor of His Majesty the King for Media Affairs, Lieutenant General Yusuf bin Ahmed Al Jalahma, Minister of Defense Affairs, Major General Khalifa bin Ahmed Fadla, the head of Royal Protocols, Hamad bin Ali Al Qabi, Personal Secretary of His Majesty the King, 
Major General Mohammed bin Bahussein Al Masalam, commander of Sikhir Air Base. GCC leaders and heads of delegations arrived today in Riyadh, the capital of Saudi Arabia, to attend the 36th session of the Supreme Council of Arab Gulf State Summit. The summit will discuss topics regarding the GCC joint march and leaders will also discuss political developments on regional Arab and international levels, especially topics regarding Yemen and Syria. The goal of the summit is to achieve joint cooperation to provide the best benefit for the region, provide high living standards for its people and maintain the GCC's security and stability. The summit comes under exceptional circumstances which require Saudi Arabia to exert political security and media efforts to guarantee the success of the summit. The 36th GCC summit commenced its activities this evening at Al Deraya Palace after the leaders touched down in the Saudi capital Riyadh. The summit comes at a time of increased security and economic concerns. More details with our correspondent Mohammed Al Shaban. Their Majesties and Highnesses, the leaders of the GCC countries, have convened at the Dar'iya Palace in the Saudi capital Riyadh this evening with their accompanying delegations to kickstart the activities of the 36th GCC summit. The two day summit is being held amid several lingering political, security, and economic issues in the region. This is the first summit to be chaired by His Majesty King Salman bin Abdul Aziz of Saudi Arabia since he assumed power earlier this year. Riyadh has imposed a zero-risk policy as it beefed up security around the city and on all roads leading to the venue. The leaders meet in the midst of a global drop in oil revenue, a growing terrorist threat by Daesh, an ongoing conflict in Syria, a war to restore legitimacy in Yemen, and continuous interference by Iran. This is a regional Arab and Gulf stance taken by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Hosting the Syrian opposition conference can change a lot in the regional and global arenas. The summit is expected to arrive at decisions that would boost the GCC's security and military integration, along with strengthening cooperation with international partners in the face of growing global threats. The leaders are also expected to stress on the need for humanitarian relief and medical aid to the people of Yemen while reasserting support for the legitimate government of Abdurrabba Mansour Hadi. And on the Syrian crisis, the leaders will most likely voice their support for the Syrian opposition conference being simultaneously held in Riyadh with the aim of bridging differences within the Syrian opposition factions. We are optimistic that the strategic importance that Saudi and the GCC have can make a difference and drive the whole region to safety. This summit is of strategic importance due to the key issues it would tackle and the current geopolitical situation. However, like the ones before it, it will continue to hold the integral function of stressing the cooperative stance between the GCC member states. Now that the leaders have arrived and discussions have commenced, the people of the Gulf wait for the solutions put forth for the ongoing issues in the region. Hamid Shaban, Bahrain Television News, Riyadh. Deputy King, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa held today the weekly Majid Santrifa Palace. His Royal Highness welcomed members of the royal family, senior government officials, members of the representatives, shura and municipal councils, religious figures, academics, community leaders, journalists and diplomats accredited to the kingdom. The attendees expressed their appreciation for His Royal Highness's keen engagement with citizens by maintaining the commitment to Bahrain's values, traditions and national identity. The attendees also commended the efforts of His Royal Highness to reinforce the sustainable development of the kingdom under the development program initiated by His Majesty King Hamid, as well as the government's efforts that deliver significant improvements to public services.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Gudebia Palace participants, heads of sessions and speakers of the international conference titled Women in Public Life, From Policy Making to Influential Impact, led by the President of Arab Parliament, Ahmed Al Jarwan, UAE's Director General of the General Women's Union, Noura Khalifa Al Sawadi, and the Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women, Hala Al Ansari. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister affirmed that the hosting of the event by the Kingdom reflects Bahrain's successful steps towards empowerment of women on political, economic and social levels, which have resulted in attaining decision-making positions in various fields. His Royal Highness affirmed that the development march of the Kingdom is based on the efforts exerted by all Bahraini men and women, and that the Kingdom is proud of its rules and regulations that support the concept of equality between the two genders. He also expressed pride in Bahraini women cadres who have proved their efficiency in various work fields resulting in reaching top positions. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister affirmed that the Kingdom has always been supportive of women for their role in the development of the Kingdom and expressed pride in Bahraini women's achievements on both regional and international levels. His Royal Highness stressed the government's support to all women empowerment programmes in order to further enhance women's participation in the development process. For their part, the delegation expressed their thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his remarkable support to women and expressed their appreciation for Bahrain's leadership's keenness to maintain women's political, economic and social rights. They also hailed Bahrain's government's efforts, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, regarding women empowerment in various fields.
In a message addressed to the world on the occasion of World Human Rights Day, which falls tomorrow, Thursday, 10th of December, and is held this year under the slogan, Our Right, Our Freedom, Always, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, said the Kingdom of Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa, has given the world a leading model in the field of political, economic and social human rights. He stressed Bahrain's march is ongoing towards further improvements in a manner that contributes to raising its name at various regional and international functions. His Royal Highness said the celebration of Human Rights Day should pave the way for concerted efforts to consolidate the foundations of an international system that maintains peace and coexistence and eliminates conflict and wars all over the world. He added the Kingdom of Bahrain has succeeded in establishing a distinct approach aimed at maintaining respect of human rights and asserted that this unique diversity within Bahraini society was and will remain a source of strength and a key factor upon which Bahrain depends on its for its development. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister praised the King's initiative to establish an Arab court for human rights based in Bahrain and said Bahrain's humanitarian and cultural roots of tolerance and openness were the foundations of its contemporary progress and civil and open society. He also stressed that the celebration of the anniversary of the Universal Human Rights Day is an opportunity to work towards further improvement of the reality of human rights and confrontation of the threats endangering human life in different parts of the world. He added that the Kingdom of Bahrain shares the world's orientation for the promotion and protection of human rights and freedoms and to ensure human beings' rights everywhere to live in security, peace and stability. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister stressed the need to pay more attention to consolidating the foundations of security and global stability as a springboard towards decent life in which everyone enjoys pros a prosperous life. He warned of the dangers of leaving the doors wide open to sectarian and hatred speech, which undermines unity of the people and their efforts on the paths of progress, calling for supporting every move that deepens understanding between people and cultures. He praised the National Organization for Human Rights for its efforts aimed at maintaining human rights gains and the positive development taking place in the Kingdom of Bahrain in this respect. His Royal Highness also commended the efforts of the United Nations and its Secretary General, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, to promote human rights on an international level, calling upon the international community to back the international organization in order to improve the conditions of the people worldwide. Interior Minister Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa attended today the celebration to mark International Anti Corruption Day in the presence of the Minister of Finance, the Education Minister, and Youth and Sports Minister. The meeting was also attended by the Public Prosecutor, the Interior Ministry's Under Secretary for Nationality, Passport and Residence Affairs, the Customs Res President, the Capital Governor, the Chief of Public Security, and a number of officials. The Minister expressed gratitude and appreciation for the efforts of the General Directorate of Anti-Corruption and Economic and Electronic Security as an executive authority that fights corruption crimes. Through the cooperation between the legislative, executive and judiciary authorities, as well as NGOs and media, to implement the National Anti-Corruption Strategy. General Director of Anti-Corruption and Economic and Electronic Security, Lieutenant Colonel Basim Al-Maraj, asserted that the reform project of His Majesty the King has achieved many milestones, including the formation of the Anti-Corruption Directorate at the Interior Ministry. He expressed thanks and appreciation for the directives of the Interior Minister that have contributed to the success of the Department. A documentary on national anti-corruption efforts and the activities of the Department was shown, including the initiatives of Nazaha campaign. The Minister honoured participants and supporters of the campaign, along with winning students in the competition that was held in cooperation with the Ministry of Education. At the end of the event, the Minister toured an exhibition of artworks of students who participated in the competitions.
deputized by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Dr. Mohammed Al Maddawa, opened today Asta DM Health Center, which provides high quality health services with affordable prices. The Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and Health Minister Faiq Al Saleh were also present. The Minister of Cabinet Affairs affirmed the government's keenness led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to make investment in the health sector more active and facilitate it to achieve more progress in this sector and provide better services to the people of Bahrain. President of the Health Centre, Dr. Hazad Mupen, delivered a speech in which he expressed appreciation for His Royal Highness's patronising the opening centre. The centre aims to enhance the health care system in the Gulf over the next two years by expanding its medical facilities, receiving large numbers of patients daily, providing distinctive services and improving the health sector of Bahrain. A high-level conference on women in public life from policies to impact continues today, discussing promoting women's participation in public life for inclusive economic policies and equal opportunity in the private sector. The conference is also discussing promoting equal opportunities in parliamentary practices and the role of civil society institutions, in addition to building accountability from strategy to impact. The event is being held under the patronage of Her Royal Highness, wife of His Majesty the King, and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, and is organized by the SCW in association with the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD. The conference is gathering high-level representatives from ministers and heads of international and regional organizations working in the areas of women's affairs, policy makers and practitioners from countries in the Middle East and North Africa, and the countries of OECD, as well as specialists from inside and outside Bahrain. Bahrain has ranked first with respect to the participation of women in senior management positions in the public sector at the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development Report 2013, where the percentage of women employed in the public sector in the administrative's senior positions was 45% and exceeded the average in comparison to other countries in the Middle East and North Africa which was 29.1%. In addition, the participation rate of Bahraini women in the middle management positions amounted to 59%.